In uh, May of 2007, we made our very first visit to the Suffolk County Police Property Division. And uh, this little expedition took about seven weeks to get a permit from Suffolk County and permission from everybody involved. And finally, I got a phone call saying, come see the evidence. So on, I believe it was May 18th, 2007, uh, we went in and we filmed various articles that were taken uh, from the DeFeo house on the night of the murders that uh, are obviously still retained by the Suffolk police. So I thought I would take an opportunity to show you the raw footage from that shoot. This, as I said, was one of several trips that we would ultimately end up making to the, uh, to the property division. So here goes. This item, of course, is the uh, box that was removed from the master bedroom from under the door saddle in Big Ronnie's closet. And, uh, of course, this box was uh, very interesting because they built an entire motive around this, saying that the box contained, you know, as much as maybe $100,000 in, uh, in money. As you can see, there was an envelope indicating that, uh, basically, as Geraldine had told me, that this box was basically used for petty cash. So there was nothing of any real value in this box. And second of all, you'll note that there's a key taped to the top of it. So why would you keep uh, hugely valuable items in there and then keep a key taped to the top? So this was just another reason why the, uh, the prosecution's motive of greed didn't end up uh, panning out in the end. But nonetheless, a very interesting item to, to see. These, uh, these right here, these are knives that were taken, they're, they're listed in the inventory as being taken from, I believe, the dresser uh, or nightstand of Big Ronnie DeFeo. And uh, they were just interesting to look at. They obviously didn't bear any forensic quality, you know, to our investigation or anything like that. But once again, these were items that were owned by Big Ronnie. And if they brought them out, we were going to film them. This item uh, is pretty interesting. It's, it looks like what could be a, a piece of a banister, perhaps, or maybe a bar stool leg or something along those lines. And I believe that this was removed from the trunk of uh, Butch DeFeo's Buick Electra. And you'll notice that there's a, a lot of tape around the bottom indicating that maybe it was a, used as a weapon of some sort. This also, I believe, was removed from the trunk of uh, Butch DeFeo's car. And it's just a, uh, a spool of nylon rope. Didn't really have any bearing on the case, but uh, we went ahead and we shot it along with uh, getting a number of B-roll cuts of the little homicide evidence labels and the item numbers and, and what have you. Just because that stuff in a documentary obviously comes in handy. You never know where, where you're going to need some B-roll footage. This was really interesting. This, this uh, packaging here actually contains all of the fingernail scrapings, hair samples, blood samples, and other assorted uh, forensic items that uh, were removed from the DeFeo victims. And uh, obviously very interesting because you can see all this stuff. And uh, 38 years later, Suffolk County still has it in their possession. And I will also note that, that everything you're seeing is kept within a uh, temperature-controlled environment. This is the blanket that, uh, as you will probably recognize, uh, covered Louise DeFeo that night. I had originally asked for all of the clothing worn by the victims, and Suffolk County was unable to locate most of that stuff, but they did find this blanket uh, in a box, and when they pulled it out, they said, we don't know if this is of anything, you know, anything of interest to you. And of course, I recognized it instantly and knew that it was the blanket covering Louise from the crime scene photos. The, the wadded up bundle next to it are actually Louise DeFeo's bed sheets from the bed. These obviously was, this was the, the bedding that was beneath her when she was shot. So we didn't want to miss an opportunity, obviously, to, to photograph this material because this is the real McCoy. And, uh, it obviously holds a certain, uh, you know, historical value, and uh, you never know when you're, when this stuff could disappear. And uh, if you get an opportunity to film something like this, you try to film it from, you know, as many different angles as possible. What was really 
what really caught our attention was just the amount of blood that was caked to that sheet and uh, of course to the blanket. And uh, it was it was really stunning to see this. And of course, this was the the you know the money shot. Uh, this was the thirty five Marlin three thirty six that uh, Butch DeFeo allegedly used to kill his family. It was certainly involved in the crime, though we also believe that there were other other guns involved in the crime. We wanted to be sure that we photographed every square inch of this gun because we knew that that people would be very interested, obviously, in seeing this and. Uh, it's in quite good shape. It still has all of the uh, evidence tags on it, including the original evidence tags back from back in 1975 at the trial. And the cops, I want to note that these, that these officers in the property division, they were very gracious with us. Uh, they allowed us, they told us as long as we were wearing the, uh, the rubber gloves that we were, per, that we were provided, that we could uh, move items around or whatever, if we needed to move them around for the sake of lighting them. Uh, I think that for the most part, we pretty much let them move everything around and we wanted to get them in the shot wherever possible because it sort of, you know, authenticated things, authenticated where we were at. Uh, there's the original tag. You'll see October 22nd, 1975 and uh, Martin K. Rowe. Martin K. Rowe was the uh, stenographer throughout the DeFeo trial.